Yep. All right, John. So when you sat down today, I, I heard the distinct uh, sound of something heavy and metallic hitting your desk. What is that? You don't suppose that was my penis, do you? Well, the doctor did say you shouldn't lift anything too heavy, but I don't <laughs> think that was what I heard. I have had some work done. <laughs> did you have the Ron Jeremy treatment? <laughs> oh, ick. That guy, I don't think he was ever attractive, but now that he's like 75, jeez. I know, he's, yeah. Someone, I think on our team, mentioned that they saw him in one of the airports, and I don't remember who that was. I remember hearing the same yeah. thing. It's it, just not a pretty picture. He's, no, yeah. no. God. But it would be kind of interesting to, to be in the same vicinity as him, because I hear he's very diminutive, diminutive in stature. Oh, he is. He is he is not large of large stature. Large stature, but he's large in other respects. Uh, but but doesn't that make you wonder if it had a lot to do with comparison to overall size and camera angles? I really don't wonder that, John. Yes, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave that one up to you. Uh, now you're starting to wonder it, though. Anyway, <laughs> so that big massive thing I brought in here, right next to my penis. <laughs> Is this Guinness Draft, D R A U G H T, which obviously is draft. It's draft. Uh, that's it's obvious to most. Yeah. Is that well, obvious of, to you? A lot of people. A lot of people would say D R A F T, but I've heard that pronounced draw. I have the e, e, you. We talked about this earlier, and and I yep. I have never heard that. And and yep. you had thought it might be a southern thing, but again, I live in the south, and I haven't heard that. I'm not saying You're it's not. not. I mean, really I'm, in the south. Not really. Nashville. I'm in the the mid south. I think they call it the mid south. It. You know what blows me away is I used to do some work for a, a client in, um, uh, let, well, I can say it. Sure, Lafayette, Indiana. Mm -hmm. Lafayette is mm, what probably almost halfway between Indy and and you know Chicago area, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Ish, and so. As soon as I go there, people always start talking with a drawl. And <laughs> Chicago is an hour away. Yeah. And now well, you're speaking with a drawl. Where did I, that happen? I don't know. I run into the same interesting issue when I go to uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati is in Ohio. Yeah. But what is right across the river is Kentucky. <laughs> and you still have people with that Kentucky drawl. It's <laughs> really interesting. But speaking of Indiana and Lafayette, Indiana, yes. uh, I am, I, and this has only a little bit to do with Indiana, more to do with an American drink, because we're, we're, and we'll get back on the draft versus draw here in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Don't I'm going, to. I'm going strictly American, and and representing our our colleagues and our brothers and sisters in the New York area, and I'm drinking a Manhattan. You, ladies and gentlemen, have tuned in smack dab in the middle of the Potty Mouths drinking episode. That's right. You may have surmised that already, but I'm looking at Nick drinking his rye Manhattan, which looks delicious, by the way. It is very it delicious. Is without ice, AKA neat. Neat, right? yep. Tell me about that. Well, first of all, the reason I mentioned Indiana is the rye that I'm using is from Indiana. And I believe it's from Lafayette. I could be wrong about that. I'm not 100%, but I do know it's from Indiana. And uh, it is a very, very, very smooth rye that I actually bought in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Um, so I am drinking a, a rye Manhattan. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very, very good. But you had pointed out that this is the drinking episode. So we're actually admitting that we're drinking. That doesn't mean we haven't <laughs> had cocktails while we're podcasting in the past it just happens to be the time where we're actually admitting it mainly because it's like 6 30 at night and you know it's it's been a long week so far and we just we, it, we felt it was time it was time to invite you in to our home life and to our drinking um escapades totally agree and and i will say that um the unique part about it is this is the first episode where I've seen you without your bong in front of you. Yeah, that's true. That's very, very true. <laughs> yes. What is that gurgling on your end, Nick? <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I've never done that. No? I've never, never taken a hit out of a bong. 
Oh, oh okay. Well, you were clarifying that a little yes, bit. Yes, I, I had to clarify. Clinton on me. No, no, I'm okay. no, mm-mm. no. I did go to college. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you, you know, you see it enough and I just, uh, whatever. I, I'm, I'm not judgy. <laughs> I can't <laughs> tell you. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I, we have, I think we have talked about this before. My favorite line out of our podcast. I think we've talked about this before, or we've talked about this before. Oh, we always say that. Um, I know. Yeah, I know. We, we should Sorry. try to get out of the habit, but now I think it's part of the potty mouth's lexicon. The potty con. <laughs> it's called it the potty con. the lexicon, yes. Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> I, I, if it ever becomes legal nationally or federally, I'm all about it. I, I will do it I, because we've talked about this in one of the past episodes. See, there we go again uh, you, about you go. I don't anxiety. Go. You, well, yeah. Um, anxiety. And, and I think a lot of people have said that not just marijuana, but also CBD has a lot of benefits when it comes to anxiety. I know CBD doesn't have any THC in it, and it's supposed to be perfectly legal. I still won't touch it until it is a hundred percent legal because I, it frightens me. Just oh, because well, I don't, okay. I don't want, I don't want our our company to come back and make the decision. Hey, we're going to drug test you now, and I just, I that that's my thing. I understand other people <laughs> fine. It's not going to affect other people. It probably won't pick, be picked up. But hey, I'm a little strange. I'm going to drink my Manhattan. Well, you, <laughs> because it's legal. It I'm over totally 21 legal. and it's, it's legal. So is CBD. Of course, you know that. Mm-hmm. And CBD mm-hmm. is made from hemp as mm-hmm. opposed to marijuana. So I know it's, it's just, it's too close. It's just too close. No, for me. it's not. It's not close at all. You should do some research. You're the research king. Do some research. No, I have. I know. Yeah. I know. But it's just, it's too close for me. Here's what I I just I, I just know that if I were to do it, it would be yep. I'd get it from a, a place that it's tainted, it's wrong, and I would be the one who gets caught. <laughs> well, let me give you a little advice. Go to a place that has a good reputation and don't be afraid to spend about three hundred dollars because that's what the good stuff costs. That's true. And it's ridiculous. But uh, that said, uh, what has softened me to marijuana and or uh, and, and I hesitate even to use in the same sentence, CBD, anything like that, that people may use to, uh, uh, make their lives better after having cancer, I'll tell you, I'm wide open to it now for people. If they want to knock yourselves out, especially when I think about people who are in pain from chemo and stuff mm-hmm. like that, cause, cause it sucks. And I, and I know I'm not saying anything that's new, nor am I planning to turn this into a soapbox thing, but it, it certainly softened me on what I, uh, what I think is okay. And, and so look, uh, yes, I smoked pot as a kid, like anybody who went to college, not as much as the guys down the hall from me, by the way. I did not but, live down the hall, my friend. <laughs> oh man. I have funny stories about that. We'll discuss in another All episode, right. but, but, uh, so I, I'm not, as I say, I'm not judging about it at all. But for elderly folks, if it gives them some relief, or anybody who's elderly like me, um, I'm, I'm good with it. But yeah. again, I'm with you on the legality part. I, yeah. think, I think medical marijuana should be totally legal for anyone who, uh, who can benefit from it. 100% agree. 100%. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I know a few people that have done uh, swear by the CBD, and and I hear people talk about it all the time, and I'm 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 all about that. But again, yeah, it's it's I just know that if I were to try to do something that's not legal, I would be the one to get caught because I always always get caught. Understood, but that is not illegal. I know. <laughs> I understand this. Anyway, John, I'm, I'm changing buy subjects for you. I'm going to buy some for you and we're going to have a CBD party. Hey, I've, I, we've already got it in the house. I give it to my dogs all the time. Uh, oh. I will, I, I'm changing the subject really fast. Not really fast. It's I hopefully going to take, I, I'm, I'm seeing. The cops are listening. Exactly. We're on video right now and I noticed that your office is done or at least looks more done than it did last time I saw you. It, it's done. It's got a whole it's bunch of dunner. stuff uh, in place and uh, I uh, assembled some chairs and look we looked at several chairs i don't need i'm not uh 
I, I don't need leather, beautiful leather chairs in my office. And I'm not trying to impress anybody. I need something big and comfy. So these are pleather or fake something. I'm not even sure they pretended it was fake. And so the chairs I got that I put together this morning with an assembly tool, um, which should be my nickname, by the way, uh, it, it, was, <laughs> it was a pain in the butt, but the chairs are wide and my big butt can fit on there. And frankly, anyone's big butt. I don't think I've ever seen anybody whose butt would not fit in one of those chairs because it's just massive. And Lisa sits right. in it and her feet don't even touch the ground. <laughs> They're That's big awesome. chairs for a change. That's what I got. So, I like it. I like it. But reasonably yeah. priced. Thank you. Well, since we've, we're, we're still stuck at home, to... since, we're, since we're still stuck at home, yeah. you know, you, it's, it's, we're gaining all the, I think they call it the Corona 15, like <laughs> the freshman 15. So you need those bigger chairs. But you haven't gained it. You I haven't. Magnificent. Thank you. Thank you. But I, and I too have, I've moved well, you my office around and, and so yeah. just, uh, just like you and, and you're probably the, um, uh, the reason why I moved my office around, but you notice behind me, I've been made fun of because I actually have on this wall. Normally, I didn't have a wall behind me. I had my staircase because I, I moved my desk from facing the windows right. looking out yeah. now to the wall. So the window is now to my right, and the wall behind me has all of my, my degrees on it. And so some of our colleagues saw some video chat because it's what we do now. And they're like, Nick, you look like a doctor. And they were making fun of me because I have all these here. And I'm like, guys, listen, I spent a lot of money on these pieces of paper. Forget about the education. These pieces of paper are really expensive. I'm going to show them off. So, yeah, I, I moved my office around and cleaned it up. And, and it's it looks good. Thanks. Thanks. So you can see. Very, and they are very impressive, and I will grant you that. And you can't really see it too well because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, reflection. But in the back behind me is a picture of my first Harley, and I too spent a lot on that. There <laughs> so you go. So you've got to show it off. I want it in the picture. Exactly. Exactly. And then, so right I next don't to have my, the degrees, you do obviously. Right next to the degrees beautiful. are the yes. the antique. Um, slot machine. So, you know, oh, I spend cool. a lot of money and then I gamble a lot of money. And then there's books nice. that I never read. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's how we're set up up here. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. And then over uh, here, you know, the golf clubs have to have a spot. Oh, I see you have the sticks there. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's very uh, nice. For see, any burglars. Over there above the printer is a, a picture. There's two pictures right there. And one of them is extremely appropriate. The other one is kind of appropriate because if you've ever played hockey in Minnesota, drinking is part of the game. Uh, <laughs> the other one, though, you kind of see the antique picture back there of my yeah. family's bar in, Nether in the Netherlands. Really? So my, my family had a bar uh, back in the 40s. And that, that place is wow. no longer there because the Nazis drove a tank through it. I just found that out. Wow. Recently. Yeah. So there you go. That was the tour of my office. Interesting. And then wow. you've got an arrow cool. pointing to your Harley. I always, I always, yes, actually I do, but that's the old Harley. So it's, yeah, this is the first, I wish I still, it's the, I wish I wouldn't have sold it Harley. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, and I do somewhere, somewhere in this house, I have a picture of the cheap. I did not want to sell. I probably put that up up in here somewhere too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So have you given any more, Thought to Jeeps? Oh, I, so I was recently talking to the dealer that, uh, not, not, and not your pot dealer, not my pot dealer. No, my car dealer. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> uh, different. Yeah. That, that nicely timed, sir. Nicely timed. Yes. The, one of the dealers that I normally work with for my day job, not my pot dealer or drug dealer for that matter. Yeah. Um, or sure. my liquor dealer. Sure. Um, <laughs> So I was I was talking to him in in one of our normal meetings, and uh, I said, you know, and I and I had said this to my wife too. It is a perfect example of how my life goes, where I am extremely patient. I had that Sentra for over a year, and I said, from the day I, I got it, I'm planning to get a new car. And I was looking at Jeeps, and I was looking at other cars too, and. But Jeep was my main goal. I'm going to wait until they have good deals because a lot of times, certain times of the year, they have just really good deals and you can't pass it up, right? So I wait and I wait and I wait and I wait. Nine months at least I'm waiting. And I'm like, 
this is ridiculous. I really need a new car. This deal comes along on this Mercedes that I just cannot pass up. So I take it. And I, and I say it that way because I'm perfectly happy with this car. I love this car. It is one of my dream cars. If I could have a dream garage, I would have a Porsche, a Mercedes or BMW, Audi, whatever it is, but Mercedes and a Jeep. Those would be my three dream cars right there, right? So I'm, I'm very happy with this car. Not even a well, month after I buy this car, Jeeps go on sale at employee pricing with seven grand off. I'm like, mother of is interrupt us. <laughs> just my luck. That's just, that's, that's typical. I, I think I'm having a lot of, of, uh, I, I'm being patient. I have a lot of, of, of a, the ability to wait a lot of, a lot of patience. I have a lot of patience to wait for this and I wait a long time. And then sure enough, that's what happens. <laughs> that's life for me, bud. Well, that sucks. I'm sorry yeah. about that. That's okay. I'm still, I mean, but, I, don't get me wrong. I'm still extremely happy. Uh, so here's, here's what I would say. After renting the Jeep that you and I talked about before when I was in Washington state yeah. and driving to the mountains and so on, I, I I get the Jeep thing. They're way better than they used to be. They 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 handle while it's while it's reminiscent of the old Jeeps, it's way better. Yeah. Just incredibly better. But reminiscent in that where you point it, it will go. And that part of that's the short wheelbase, part of that is is the bigger tires and, and things like that. So I really enjoyed the Jeep. I thought it was great. However, uh, your Mercedes is for what you use it for. Ninety-eight percent of the time is way yeah. better than the Jeep. Yeah, and the Mercedes, you point it in a direction, you put the pedal down, even in eco mode, and that thing goes. Oh, I, I was time. pulling out of my neighborhood, and and there was a car coming. Cause we have this big hill, and cars do not slow down coming this down this big hill, and I didn't see it. Uh, very well because there was a car in front of me and I pulled out and I'm like, Oh shit. And I was in eco mode, which is the slowest mode that you can be in, in a, in a Mercedes. And I put the pedal down and I was zero to 60 in less than six seconds. And I'm like, Oh my God, nice. I just shit my pants <laughs> for two reasons. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good to know you have that power when you need it. I, yeah. I, I mean, you're not a, you're not, I'm not a, a fast driver. driver. No, no, I, I no. Wouldn't say, but it's when you have that power, it's great. to. Have yeah. And especially again, not to, not to emphasize this any further, but when you're in eco mode, because this has eco mode, comfort mode, sport mode, and then sport plus sport but plus is some sort of an override in an emergency when you hit it. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, it and, seems to me that it doesn't matter what mode you're in. It's going to give you the full teeth. Oh, yeah. If, as soon as you hit a certain point where the yeah. turbos have to kick in, it's going. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's a, so it's a C300. So it's a, a, um, a turbocharged um, four-cylinder. So it's a small engine. Yeah. It's not a big engine. Yeah. And that thing just crushes it. I, I, I my daughter. Turbos. Oh, great. me too. I love that wine. Most people don't like the wine. That's why they want to go with the big engine instead of the small engine with a turbo. Yeah. I like the wine. Yeah. yeah. And I like bourbon. <laughs> wine and bourbon. You were going to say something about Peyton. Go. What was she talking? Oh, no, no, no. I was going to say it, it's nowhere near the, the – there's a, a YouTube video you can find where there's a, a little girl in the backseat of a GTR. I'm not comparing my Mercedes to a GTR by any means because a GTR <laughs> would good. just, it would turn the Mercedes into dust. But <laughs> the same thing happened. I, I was going down our road and I, and it was like the second or third day I had the car and Peyton likes a little bit of speed. So she was sitting in the back seat and I said, you want to try something? She's like, sure. So I stopped the car <laughs> in the middle of the road, put it in sport plus and floored it. And her eyes, it was just like this, this look of shock, amazement, and thrill all in the same view of her in the back seat because it was, I mean, it was gone in a flash. And she'd never experienced that before. So, because the Sentra does not move that quickly, even in sport say, mode. You didn't have that with the Sentra? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, 
no. No. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Okay, so let's give a drink update. Drink you're update. On yours. I see you're, you said, I, I want to talk about this because off the air, you mentioned to me that you like your Manhattans shaken. Yes. And, and so when I, as a bartender, when I would shake a drink, it was almost, I mean, as far as I can remember, always with ice. Yes. That's why you shake it. You're, yeah, you're, it's, chilling you're, it the, you're chilling it and also you're adding a little bit of, it. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so uh, you just shake it without ice. No, I shake true? it with ice. No, I use oh, ice. Oh, you did I, do I, it with ice. Yeah. Okay, I mm -hmm. misunderstood. No, I, I dilute it and I try to get it a little bit uh, cooler because I, I don't put my liquor in the freezer. Um, now, I would put, and this, is, mm -hmm. this comes from a movie, but it happens to be the someone who partners this aviation gin. I'm just going to say that aviation gin is um, has a partnership with Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is hilarious. Oh, I okay. highly recommend you looking up some of the aviation gin commercials uh, with Ryan, especially with Ryan Reynolds, but even the ones without that he has something to do with hilarious aviation. And gin you're saying gin G I N, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Uh, not gin gin. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. Aviation yep. Gin, very, very, very good. But one thing I learned from a movie that his wife was in, because you know Ryan Reynolds is married to Blake Lively, uh, mm -hmm. she Who's drank just a poor, poor, ugly, unattractive. Oh, I know. Woman. I I can't believe yeah. why would he settle for someone like that? And Gosh, I mean, it's a step just, down. He, you know, he dated Alanis Morissette. It's a step down from Alanis what? Morissette. <laughs> i i always and so when my son was growing up that was certainly lisa's favorite artist or one of them mm -hmm. was alanis and and so we had the albums and my son would sing along oh to wow angry alanis and nice. uh, happily we got him into some some uh, travis tritt instead but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so i i just i actually recently bought tickets for my wife to go see alanis in concert here in nashville um she's coming in uh july or august i think i don't remember awesome. so yeah yeah she that's one of jen's and favorites too on a great show oh i'm sure she does yeah, but awesome. anyway uh, yeah. blake lively in this movie all she did was drink martinis and she used aviation gin and one of the lines in the movie was okay i'm sick of this shit i'm gonna have a real martini so and she was drinking aviation gin in her martini so she just goes to the freezer and pulls out another bottle of frozen aviation gin and makes a martini so <laughs> it's not like she was doing anything different but it's it's frozen uh, but the, the thing is there with that she didn't dilute it she just put in the vermouth shook the or, or uh, swirled the glass um in, which is a uh, another bartender trick, knocked out the rest of the vermouth and then poured the gin right into the glass, yep. which is a very, very, very good martini. Very, very strong. Be ready for it to put you on your ass. But aviation gin is is a very, very good uh, gin, um, but and probably my second favorite after Hendrix. Okay. And yeah, I, I would so freeze a Hendrix and do a gin and a, do a martini that way. So when you say that, that's assuming that there is a good gin. Uh, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> well, okay. So I, and I understand. So you, you have the same opinion as my wife. Jen does not like gin. Jen, yeah. gin. Jen, no, gin, gin. Gin, gin. And I finally convinced her to try one of my gin martinis with Hendrix in it. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, this isn't half bad. <laughs> so I would encourage you, if you haven't already... Oh, to at I least have. try Hendrix. I have, and I've I've tried Sapphire, and I've tried Sapphire I mean, doesn't do it. Sapphire uh, beef eaters. Oh, okay. Well, but what's the um, what else is on a par similar to Hendrix? Because I've uh, had Hendrix. Well, on par, it's hard because Hendrix is a uh, cucumber martini, or not martini, uh, gin. So it has oh, all the okay. regular regular flavorings. It has the juniper berries. It has a few other things, yeah. a few other spices. But it's mainly its main thing is it's made with cucumber. Interesting. Well, I love cucumber flavored, uh, you know, water or vodka or what. I mean, that's fine. But I, I've just never been. I just can't do. Uh, I could probably do one gin martini. It's kind of the way I am with uh, with um, uh, Bloody Marys. I can do one. Oh, speaking of Bloody Marys. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and talk because I'm going to send no. you a picture and then you can describe it. 
Oh, okay, cool. Oh, I know it. I bet I know what you're going to send. Or no, you, I, I guarantee you don't. Oh, you may be surprised. I've been around. Well, I'm uh, sure well, you have, and you've what? probably seen something like this before. But this is this is from this is from my friend Mattress. Okay. Yes, that is his nickname. Mattress. Mattress. Okay. I don't even want to offer a conjecture of why his name might be Mattress. But uh, uh, yeah. But go on with your story because I'm trying to send I, it to you. I, I will go on with my story, Mister. It's um. Yeah, it, truly, it's just Jim doesn't agree with me. And I have close friends who are Jim fans. And so, again, no judgment, whatever you like. But um, I was always a, uh, a, um, a vodka martini guy. And, but you prepare them the same way. And it's a, yeah, it's a strong, strong drink, no doubt. Yeah, and I, I, do, I do like myself a good vodka martini. But I find that the, the lack of flavor, because vodka doesn't have as much flavor, it's only, well, it has. Wow. It's true. It, it has a different uh, a different sense to it. But the nice part is, if you have a good uh, dry vermouth and you actually use a little, uh, you know, there are several recipes that will tell you it's one third dry vermouth and two thirds gin or vodka. Yeah. And to me, that's too much, uh, way too much, because I like them when they're. Uh, I don't. I don't like a lot of vermouth. I guess is a okay. good way to say it. So but, Je, uh, Jen, Jen loves likes vodka martinis, and and that's mm-hmm. the same thing. She doesn't like a lot of vermouth, but she likes a lot of olive juice or pickle juice. Have you ever had a, a dill pickle martini? Um, I, can't, I'm not sure if I have or not. I could see it. I could do you like dill do. pickle? I do. I yeah. I would highly recommend it. So I sent you those uh, those uh, yeah. pictures. Yeah, oh, I know exactly what you were going to send. I have a I have one. I'm not even going to say a better one because I'm not even going to search for it. But this first one that you sent, it's the um, same one. It's just a different side okay. of it. Got it. Um, I have seen one, and it's at a bar here in Wisconsin, where instead of the various little chicken pieces mm-hmm. that are in there, fried chicken that is at, and just so you know, listeners, it's at the top of a Bloody Mary. And that seems to be the thing is that- In a picture. Bars try to outdo each other by having more crap in their Bloody Mary. And normally, you know, 30 years ago, we would have them and it would have- a celery stick, maybe occasionally you'd find somebody with a, you know, a Slim Jim or some sort yep. of a sausage mm-hmm. stick or, and or cheese, but that's really it. Well, no, um, don't. Well, it, it depends. Those, those of you from Minnesota will, might remember grandmas, grandmas from Duluth that came down to Minneapolis. Did you ever go to grandmas, John? Nope. So grandmas, I wish it were still around. I think it might be somewhere. I, you know, my Minnesota friends need to correct me. Uh, I haven't been there in years, but my mom would always order a Bloody Mary, and it would come with a celery stick, it would come with a pickle, and it would come with an olive. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that sounds about right. So this picture that I sent John is from, yeah, again, my, right. my, friend, my friend Mattress. Um, there's a celery stick on top of a pitcher of Bloody Mary. Then connected to the celery stick are two pieces of bacon, a pickle, so it looks like some jalapeno poppers. And then on top of that, we've got some chicken wings, some Polish sausage, some deviled, deli, egg. deviled egg, some deli meat, some uh, mozzarella sticks. Looks like two or three different types of fried chicken. Um, another pickle and some more cubes of cheese. I can't tell what's at the top if that's a tomato or another pepper. But then on top of that is another uh, pepper or, or uh, pepperoncini. And there is a yeah. Slim Jim on there and a quarter of a grilled cheese sandwich. Oh, and then, of course, we got to top it off with a lime. And this thing is stacked like a foot high. So it's healthy. You have to have the lime. Very so healthy. healthy. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so and a celery the, stick. It's, it's amazing. The difference in one I've seen is many things. Uh, let's just say a potpourri of things like that, except the chicken is... A, a, a like a, a what do you call the small ones? Um, it's like an entire chicken that's fried. Okay, uh, a uh, not swab, not but, swab, not a quail. Um, like 
Cornish yeah. game. Cornish hen. game hen. There you go. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, that is hilarious to look at because really you're and so when I have one, it's usually still the celery stick and maybe, maybe mm-hmm. one or two other uh, accoutrement, but that's it. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, but I still can only do one and that's right. really about it for me. I don't know if it's the tomato juice or have you had I, clam juice? Clum- oh, clamato. Oh yeah. I, I, I've had it in a Bloody Mary, but I actually prefer it strangely enough in a nice light beer. So yeah, in, in Minnesota, I've you get, a, yeah, you get a, yep. a good like premium grain belt, yep. pour that and then pour in some Clamato juice. Caesar me, baby. Yeah. That's about what it is. And it's yep. delicious. It is. Yep. Very good. People are probably awesome. throwing Look up right us. now. I know. Right. right? People are probably throwing up listening to that. But. I don't think so. That's actually really good. And so other uh, uh, garnishes, mm-hmm. um, my favorite of all time on a martini is uh, what? I'm waiting. I was going to see if I was going to say it at the same time. Oh, no, you can. Oh. My favorite garnish. Oh, yeah. Well, you probably can. You yeah, were doing we, it like you're yeah. ready to. Yeah. Is blue cheese. Blue cheese olive oil. Yeah. <laughs> we have There's, those in the fridge downstairs. You know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I like those. I like pickled onions. Those are okay. And mushrooms. The pickled mushrooms are actually. Oh yeah, fun. anything pickled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like Pickle, have you ever tried pickled quail eggs? Pickled. Have I what? Pickled quail eggs in a martini. I no, I haven't, and I would. Like oh, to. That, you should. That is something I would do. Highly recommend. Yeah, Especially I if they're Cajun pickled. Would. If they're they're pickled Cajun quail eggs. So my, my stepbrother had a friend and I don't know, I don't remember the connection, but he would come up every two or three years and he would bring this huge jar of Cajun pickled quail eggs. He was from New Orleans and, and we would just devour. I mean, the guy would be there 30 minutes and we would devour this bottle of of pickled quail eggs. So good. So good. So how many are in a bottle? I mean, how many does that mean that you ate? Oh, well, between the three or four of us, depending on who was there, um, there were probably, I don't know, probably 30 or 40, but they're not big. Oh. They're not, I mean, that's not a ton, but it's still, it's, it's, are, it's pretty, uh, it, it substantial when you're talking are, about eggs. Are you sure that that wasn't malted milk ball Easter eggs? <laughs> pretty <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of those things that, oh my God, it's disgusting. I, there's no way in hell you're ever going to get me to eat that. I try one and then I eat the whole bottle. You know, it's <laughs> pickled yeah, eggs pickled are stuff, good. I, like that. I yeah. just love pickled stuff. Yeah, uh, and I, I had a I had a former boss. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. That uh, it was a big beer drinker, and he said, "My goal in life is to make sure that my liver outlasts me." <laughs> wow, well, that's a good. I, goal. I looked. I said, "Michael, how do you how do you how, how are you going to do that?" He said, "I'm pickling it with beer." <laughs> I think you got to put some vinegar in there and yeah. sugar as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But that's what watching Chopped has taught me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we did. Um, so we, we cut the cable finally. You did. And I'm sure you did that a thousand years ago. So yeah. 2012. We cut the, cut the cord. Yeah. We did it. Um, I mean, we had direct TV at our old place before we moved. And I just wasn't willing to go through all the hassle of, you know, and it's expensive. Direct TV yeah. is three times what we're paying for, for YouTube TV, which is what we bought. I, I'm not, I'm not crazy with the, with the reception. And I, you know, we mentioned that, but I, I just, I'm really appreciating the content that they have yeah. for, you know, much lower price. And it's great not to have to run coax cables. Cables? Cables? Cables. Have another drink, John. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't really, I haven't quite finished this, but I'm close. Oh, me too. When, I, and we might have to pause so we can go get more, right? Except you're out. Pauses for you're having a, you're having a, a, draw a draft draw uh what do you call it? drought <laughs> drought. drought you're having a drought <laughs> i knew what you were trying to say yeah so do you have do you have drizzly there i have who drizzly i don't know what that it's is. a it's an alcohol delivery service anyway go on with your story oh 
No. No, but we order a lot of our wine online. Yes. And here's a little listener tip, if I haven't already brought this company up. WTSO.com. WTSO.com. Tell us it's more, John. For wines till sold out. Oh. And one of our OEM clients, one of our business clients, uh, years ago told me about this. And he said, you'll, you'll love it. You got to try it. We were having dinner in um, uh, Hoboken. <laughs> I love that Jersey. name. That's one I of my favorite names. I can't believe I remember that. But, well, it's a Bugs Bunny cartoon, so I should remember that. He was going to return the penguin to Hoboken. Where you, he takes the penguin to the North Pole and he says, there you go, bud, you're home. And he goes, no, I'm from, he held up a sign. I'm from Hoboken. Bugs Bunny, Hoboken? Ooh, I'm dying. <laughs> You'll have to check it out. All right. I won't. <laughs> uh, go on. I know you won't. Anyway, that's so <laughs> oddly enough, we were eating dinner in Hoboken and this client told me of this place. We've used them ever since. And they have some will, terrific deals and uh, excellent wines and so on. And before I, I say what I'm going to say, none of these yeah. are sponsors of our podcast. So nope. they're just they things that be. we've used. Yeah, they should be. And, and hopefully they, they yeah. will be. So I, use, yeah. I have used several different ones. We started with Wink, W-I-N-C dot com. And they were great. And they, they curate a series of wine for you. But then they decided to kind of consolidate, and now it's only their wines rather than trying other people's, I guess. So um, we got a little burned out from them. So we switched over to another one uh, called First Leaf, which was very, very good, and, and we liked First Leaf. Uh, but recently, we did an order on wine.com, and we bought a, uh, a case of uh, Chardonnay, and we, half a case of Chardonnay, half a case of Rosé. So, um, but I'm going to try this WSO.com. That sounds very, very interesting because we're always WTSO. looking for WTSO. What did I say? WSO, WTSO. Yeah. 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 You're drinking. That's yeah. what the problem is. Not anymore. Is. I'm out. Oh, man. Can I tell really our listeners when you hold the glass up, you do it so daintily. You have that little I, I was no, the little finger was up. Yeah. Like I drink my tea. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very dainty. Well, so this yeah. glass, I got this glass for for christmas it's cool. and yeah it's it's got you can't really see it on the video but it has places for you to put yeah. your fingers so you don't drop it because yeah, yeah. Polish and yeah I, I can see that clearly it's cool yeah it's really nice glass i got those awesome, and i got um exactly and it's really really thick too and then i got some metal um like uh they're not um yeti but they're the same metal that you would see on a yeti yeah whiskey cool. glass whiskey cups so I got a couple of those wow. too, but it, and that's that's showing you how well my wife knows me. Give me really thick glasses that's and awesome. and tin cups that I can't break. Well, she told me you had thick glasses when she met you, so mm -hmm. I was assuming. Yeah, but I wore contacts. <laughs> she meant that. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. She knows me. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Thick ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. well, that's awesome. And so when you. When And the one aside about WTSO.com is that they, again, should be a sponsor. Um, I'm not a big, I, I don't, I will very rarely spend over $20 for a bottle of wine. Right. And they regularly have loads of selection in that, under that range, you know. Okay. So I just, they just had a case sale um, and every bottle was under 10 bucks. And, and you, you would say, well, that's a little scary. You know, what's, yeah, what if I get a bad, for the six, seven, eight years we've been doing business with them, I have yet to have a bad swallow of wine from hey, anything. That's a I've really good, them. that's a really good um, statement. I mean, that's, that's, well, and that's why I keep using them because they do okay. such a good job. They don't, will, they don't carry everything, sure. um, but if you don't mind just switching it up a little bit and trying new things, it's not a bad but yeah. wines.com I've been to for recommended wines because they carry pretty much everything. Yeah. So we're going to try ordering from flavor. I think it's flavor.com, something like that. And it's all booze. It's they, they don't have wine. They just have liquor. 
So that's the other one that uh, we've, and, and the reason John and I are talking about this, we, we haven't mentioned it very much on this podcast, but you know, we're still in the middle of our COVID stuff. We don't really want to talk about it that much, but this is our new reality. You know, it's not like we haven't ordered wine or stuff online, but now it's not, it's not like I can drive down the street five minutes and go pick up a bottle just because I'm hankering for it. So we kind of have to be strategic about it. And that's why we're ordering more often. And uh, also along those same lines, John saying that we're the same way. We don't usually spend over $20 on a bottle of wine. But one of the reasons we had to order wine recently is because we've gotten down to those bottles that we do spend more than that on that we don't want to open until there's a special occasion. And when my wife looked at me and said, it's four o'clock, it's a special occasion. Let's open that bottle. You know, it's time to order more wine. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> and then Peyton had a brother or sister. Right. No. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> no, we, we, we ran out okay, of so vodka a while ago. Flav flavor. I think it's flavor. It's, oh. it's a, they advertise it a lot as a whiskey uh, place, but it's actually, um, hold on, I'll pull up my. Yeah, this, that forwards you to something else. So it's yeah, like okay, let's not, let's not go there. I'm going to go to my history because I just had it up. There you go. What? Did you find it? My history. Nope. Uh, my... There you go. Go to your history. That's my right history. I want you to do the work for me. Oh, you do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not going to let me go back that far. Well, either that or you should just go there more often. There you go. Oh, it's flavor spelled F-L-A-V-I-A-R dot com. Flaviar. Flaviar. Like caviar. Flaviar. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Fla it's not, fl they say it flavor? Experience fine spirits. Okay. One sip at a time. Yep. All right. Awesome. There you go. Excellent. Well done. And so if you're wondering, well, I don't know if this is appropriate. Well, let's just say we're reaching a much bigger audience as we talk about drinking ever since. <laughs> right. So here's, according to... According to Republic National Distributing Company, a major $20 billion revenue wines and spirits distribution company, 20 billion, sales of spirits jumped by around 50% for the week ending March 21. I wonder Nationally, why. the overall increase for the week, according to Nielsen, was a 55% spike in sales. Wow. <laughs> Ever since COVID. Wow. It's incredible. That is really tequila saw the biggest spike up more than seventy five percent. So we 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 say this, and and I know I, I'm positive we have said this before, but neither John or I are really big drinkers. Uh, I, we're we're talking about it. We're having a cocktail right now. It's a lot of fun. But if I have more than two of these, I am done. The next day is is going to be you know non-existent it's not that we drink a ton <laughs> but i will have to say during this whole covid19 crap uh, i have definitely had more to drink than i normally do it's more like an extended <laughs> holiday like during christmas during any of those holidays where you're home with your family how you tend to drink a yeah. little bit more than usual that's been the last few weeks now having been home granted i'm not having more than one or maybe two a night but still, it's more than normal because I normally don't drink during the week. I come home on a, and Friday right after work, as soon as that five o'clock bell hits, my wife makes fun of me because we have this one email that goes out to our, our field staff and it usually comes out. It, it doesn't really matter when it comes out. I usually wait until five o'clock to send it or just before five o'clock to send it. And that's the last thing I do on a Friday. She makes fun of me all the time. But that's so as soon as that email's sent, then I have a cocktail and, and she will sit there with my cocktail in her hand and wait and say, have you sent your email yet? That's awesome. Have you sent your email yet? <laughs> okay. It's sent. Here you go. That is a good wife. That is a good wife. I have a very good wife. I'm lucky. You do. 
you outkicked your coverage. That's for sure. I did. I but there's also a, I, I say that while I have my office door closed and I'm on the third floor <laughs> and just kind of trying to avoid everybody for now. You should just just open the door and just yell down. Yes, John, I have a great wife. Oh, she yeah, listens no. to the podcast now. Remember the yeah, very well, first Lisa podcast to the last one too. She did. So I think we have created. Well, I don't know about fans, but she. I'm sure she rolled her eyes as much well, as she does. Okay, well, I don't remember. Did you criticize her in the last one? That's what I asked her. She said okay. no, but at some point, apparently, I was talking about our son and his mother <laughs> actually <laughs> using her name. I, so I, 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 I remember hearing that, and I avoided it like the plague. I, was, I wasn't going to go there. Well, we've been married for a long time, so it's not like you know I would do anything to purposely yeah look like yeah. an idiot well the the very the first I, I do accidentally i think i told you the very first time jennifer listened to any of our podcasts was the only time i ever criticized her on the podcast <laughs> nice yeah so i got a lot of shit for that and had to sleep in the guest room for a, a night but, you know <laughs> and i don't even think it was a criticism it was just one of those things where she took it as a criticism i'm like i, I i'm sorry i whatever yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it wasn't a criticism. John is winking into the camera. It's very <laughs> no, it's unsettling. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Boy, Jen is right. You're very critical. I am very critical. I'm <laughs> critical of everything and everyone. <laughs> I'm only critical of your spelling and and uh, grammar. Yes, yes, you are, and I'm I'm very appreciative of that. So I don't really know if that's critical or not. If You've the person better. appreciates it. No, I I just started using Grammarly more often. I'm okay with that. Who is also not a sponsor, but you know who is a sponsor? I do. Buffy. Not from not family. Not your ex-girlfriend or from oh, Family Fair, totally. right? It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's okay. it's Buffy, and, and they are a fantastic bedding company. It's like sleeping on a marshmallow if you're looking for new bedding, I, especially have during COVID. you ever slept on a marshmallow? I have never met uh, never met a marshmallow I didn't like. <laughs> the only, you know, honestly, the only thing I think of when you ask me that question, because you've asked me that question before, is the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. I love the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Yeah. So, uh, side note, we'll get back to Buffy here in a second. But side note, Peyton is is getting to that age where now she's watching all of those videos on YouTube that we always make fun of of those kids that are watching other kids play video games. She watches oh, some now, yeah. and one of the ones that she watches is is a group of, of kids. I think they're actually in their 20s, but a group of kids who are uh, playing Roblox. And the last episode we watched, one of the characters was actually the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. And I was so <laughs> impressed by my nine-year-old daughter who knew exactly who that was and exactly awesome. which movie that came from. Because I know a lot of people that watching awesome. that probably had no freaking idea. <laughs> Yay, Peyton. I'm a proud papa for that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's a massive accomplishment as yeah. a father. I think so. But anyway, <laughs> Buffy, great bedding company. If you're interested in looking up or if you're looking for sheets or, or duvets or duvet covers or anything like that, Check out Buffy. Comforters. Can, comforters, yeah. You can uh, head up to our website and find uh, the affiliate links there uh, to save a little money and to help us out. And you can also uh, find that link in our show notes. Uh, John? Pottymiles.com. Pottymiles.com, that's right. And uh, you know what? I would love to hear some of your drinking stories, good or bad or ugly. Something we might actually be able to, to me now. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to our listener. <laughs> Head up to our, our website. John, what is that website again? P-O-D-D-I-M-O-U-T-H-S dot com. Dot com, pottymouse.com. And become part of our potty family. Yeah, do that. Yeah. And, and let us like know. Tell party. us some stories. Potty party. Yep. There's so many potty things we can talk about. I know. It's, it's, I have a list. I'm, yeah, it's not, a, sure. it's not a happy <laughs> list, but... <laughs> no. John, it has been fantastic. It's wonderful as always, but I'm going to walk down the two flights of stairs so I can have another cocktail and Do have it. some dinner before I throw up. Do <laughs> and we will be delighted to hear that you did not hurl. Say hi I to Jim. Make sure that All that's in the listeners. next podcast. 
we thank you so much. And we may do this again. If you liked it, let us know. If you didn't like it, I couldn't understand you the second half or something like that because we were mush mouths after a beer and whatever Manhattan he had. Right. Let us know. Yeah, and it's you. Manhattan, not a Brooklyn. Oh, and no, don't forget, if you do like it, not the Hoboken, if you did like this episode or any of our episodes, share it with at least one other friend. One person. One person. John, see ya. Next.